إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونؤمن به ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من سرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحج هج محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل مهدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما صدق الله العظيم اما بعد all praises are due to Allah we thank him and praise him we testify that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah alone and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his hand picked messenger may the peace mercy and blessing of Allah be upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his family, his followers, and whoever follows him towards righteousness until the day of Qiyamah. Amma ba'd ibadallah. 
Today's khutbah is a continuation of the last one, which is about depression, anxiety, and its remedies. We did mention the last time that on an annual basis, statistic has it that 80,000 people commit suicide on an annual basis due to the fact that they are depressed. And we need a solution to this. We need a solution to this. The reason for the depression among which we mentioned was that lack of iman, lack of firm faith in Allah, but lack of firm faith in predestination. It is part of Artanul Iman to believe in predestination and to umina billah wa malaikatihi wa kutubihi wa rusulihi wal yawmil akhir wa bil qadr. The believers should have a firm belief in qadr, in the decree of Allah, in predestination in that whatever befall him has been written by Allah Azza wa Jalla. Lack of that, lack of Iman bil Qadr will eventually get us to depression if at all we are visited by hardship, if at all we are visited by turmoil, if at all we are visited by fitna, musibah, if at all we are tested by Allah. If at all we lack Iman in predestination, that this has been pre-written by Allah, that it must come to pass, then definitely it will affect us. But if we have the Iman that Allah has decided this aforetime, then we will believe in predestination. This is one of the qualities or characteristics of a believer with true Iman. And to umina billah, believe with firm faith in Allah. Wa malaikatihi, his angels. Wa kutubihi and the books, wa rusulihi and the messengers. Wal yomil akhir. And on the day of resurrection, and the last day, wa bil qadr. Believing in predestination, the good thereof and the evil thereof. When we have this iman, then we will be safe from depression. Otherwise, we will always be visited by depression. Another reason why we are depressed is being hopeful of things that are not even written in our name. Forgetting that Allah Azza wa Jalla is the provider. Building high hopes, high hopes for the distant future without any guarantee that we will, we, will, we, will, we will grab that distant future. I want to achieve this in life. I want to have this. I want to have this. I want to have this. Without even having a meeting with Allah prior to you thinking you can achieve that. Whatever you have has been written by Allah. All you needed to do is to make asbab, the sabab. Failure to have that is, al is always going to be a problem. Now there should be a solution to this. And the solution we did mention was to believe in predestination. That Allah Azza wa Jalla has predestined this. If at all um, a good visits me, then I should come up with the conclusion that this was written by Allah. All I needed to do was a small effort. If the opposite knocks at my door, I should appreciate and accept this in good faith. So long as we are alive, what Allah has written in our name will definitely come to pass. All we need to do is make effort and leave the rest to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Al-Hassan, may Allah have mercy on him. He was asked how he attained his good manners. He was asked how he attained his good manners. He replied, from being contented with the decree of Allah. Hassan, you lan not want to do it. You don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. You do Abu Hatim, may Allah have mercy on him, reported that some of the Salaf said regarding being contented or being content, there is no rank higher or mightier than being content. 
amud ben makama bi nga xamne genna kawé doylo makamo le tije miya lonko a cikata katam bi hadama dingo ay wasa ni wasata mari man satallal la la nyino kan mari man satalla ye harje minna wala ye ay min dila i wasata wakan makama le tije min cikata woti amud ben makama bi nga xamne mo gena kawé nit ki doylo doylo yalla subhanahu wa ta'ala ci lepp lum dogal ci mom ci lu bax ak ci safandi yalla ne li lay am nanguna ko contana ci bekna ci yalla ne li duma ko am nanguna ko contana ci bekna ci it is the peak of loving allah being content is the peak of loving allah this is exactly what prophet zakaria radiyallahu um, alayhi salatu wassalam supplicated to allah to grant him to his son as allah azza wa jalla said when zakaria prayed for a son towards the end of the prayer zakaria prayed that this child should be content with whatever he's given that is mentioned in surah maryam when allah said kaf ha ya ain sud dhikru rahmati rabbika abdahu zakaria idh nada rabbahu nidaan khafiya قال ربي اني وهن العزم مني واستعل الراس شيبا ولم اكن بدعائك ربي شقيا واني خفت الموالي من ورائي وكانت امراتي عاقره فحب لي من لدنك وليا يرثني ويرث من ال يعقوب واجعله ربي رضيا زكريا made a very long prayer a very long dua asking for a son a pious son a righteous son that would inherit him in knowledge and prophethood towards the end he said waj'alhu rabbi radiya and make him my lord pleasing to you yalla def ko muy ki nga xamne daf la gërem daf la appreciate dafa doylu ake moti ba mimbe wasala mimbe duña la koku la mimbe te te mari man satallaya contentment can only be established when the slave has firmly in his mind the conviction that whatever allah decrees result from his wisdom allah provides and deprives for a wise reason if allah gives is for a wise wise reason if he decides not to give allah azza wa jalla has a wise reason to do that because who al hakim allah provides and deprives for a wise reason and this is the only thing that will make a person feel at ease during times of hardship this also applies during times of prosperity pros, uh, prosperity as allah azza wa jalla informs us in the quran about prophet sulaiman alayhi salatu wassalam allah said about sulaiman this is from the favor of my lord to test me whether i will be grateful or ungrateful and whoever is grateful wa man yashkur fa inna ma yashkuru li nafsi he does that to his own good if you are grateful you are actually favoring yourself fa inna ma yashkuru li nafsi wa man kafara fa inna allah ghaniyyun hamid whoever is an ingrate whoever disbelieves whoever decides not to be grateful fa inna allah ghaniyyun hamid allah is all rich worthy of all praises Allah is not in need of you praising him. Ila tento ma lafa. Ila tentu balia ma tala. A yalla boko sante yoku ko. Nyaka ko sante wanyi wuko. Huwa al ghaniyul hamid. He is all rich, worthy of all praises. Inna Allah huwa al ghaniyul hamid. This is also evident in the saying of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When his son Ibrahim died the son of Ibrahim the son of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Ibrahim died at, at barely the age of 2 The prophet came and stood in front of his son who was dead Anyata Ibrahim Belari Sanjifula Nay wasi man tambala What did the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam say to to his dead son He said the ice cries the ice cry tears and the heart become sad but we will not say that which will bring the wrath of Allah upon us 
if it was not a true promise, if at all the promise wasn't true, and that we will meet in an appointed time, and that the last will eventually follow, that is death will follow after the first one, then we would have cried hard for your death, Ibrahim. Indeed, we are saddened by your departure. This is in Al-Bayhaqi and Ibn Majah. By saying this, what does the Prophet ﷺ mean when he addressed the dead, his dead son? What did he mean? He meant that he had not, had he not known that there was a wisdom behind Allah killing his son at that tender age, he would have extremely be saddened about the whole situation. But he knew for a fact that Allah took Ibrahim at the end of two for a reason. That's why he said, we will not nte nte pisala mumeke dun chalit den yo wax rek luñu yalla wax lo inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun but towards the end he said we indeed we are saddened by your departure another solution for someone who is depressed another solution is extra prostration and glorification to allah and worship in general takes away grief nit ki am nahar am tis doctor is it not in the remembrance of Allah that the heart gets its satisfaction? Salo siyandi. Sali wati lulo wolkola nafilo siyandi. Suta nafilo siyandi. Wa mina layli fatahajjad bihi nafila. Ala yofo chila ala yabara bembele. Suta nafilo siyandi. Mari man sata Allah. Ateri nyoyaba. Let your connection with Allah be even greater than ever before. If you want to word of grief from your life. And Allah Azza wa Jalla said, And we have already know that your breast is constrained by what they say. So exalted with praise of your Lord. And be of those who pray, pray, prostrate. Allah Azza wa Jalla commanded the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That I know you are hardened by what is happening. But exalt the praises of your Lord. And be among those who prostrate. And worship your Lord until there comes to you certainty. Wa abudu rabbaka hata yaati akal yakin. Whenever the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam felt grief or worry, what, would, what, 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 was he, what, what was he used to doing? Anytime he felt that I am worried or I am grieved by someone or by a situation, he would rush to prayer. He would rush to prayer. Sometimes he would even say to Bilal, make azan and bring us ease so that prayers can bring us ease bilal wadan banga tasali nyin kamma ni ku yaye bo nyin kamma nga kontan nyin kamma nga sondo ma tenk ngo soto bilal no dal bu ko defe nahar biñ am ak tis bi ak grief bi yalla genne ko no dal gaaw ñu gaaw julli because in it there is ease because in it we can get rid of grief the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever continuously asks for forgiveness from Allah, then Allah will make a way out for him from all his worries. Whoever makes tawbah continuously, Allah Azza wa Jalla will remove all your worries. And he will provide for him from means he never would have expected. This is what the Prophet Sallallahu said. And Allah even said in the Quran, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجَعَ اللَّهُ مَخْرَجَ I have a problem. I don't even know a way out. I don't know. I can't even think of an exigency from this problem. If you have piety with certainty, whatever difficulty comes your way, Allah said, I will make a way out for you. And on top of that, he will provide him with means, unexpected means, means he never expected. 
A hadith narrated by <coughs> Abbas, <coughs> Abu Abbas Abdullah says, Remember Allah in times of ease, remember Allah in times of ease, and he will recognize you in times of distress. What hit you could not have missed you. What missed you could not have hit you. And remember that victory comes with patience, relief comes with affliction, and ease comes with hardship. Inna ma'al usri yusra. After every hardship, there is ease. Now the final cure that which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam advised us is Allah will relieve any slave. The Prophet said, Allah will relieve any slave who is afflicted with a grief and anxiety from his anxiety and replace grief with happiness. If at all he says. Says what? Kila ko momo ye ni kuya soto. Nyin duara ngwa yakara. Wala masi bako wale yetaki. Wala depression wale duntela. But in Yindua, Yakaran Yakal Sandi Mariman Satalaya, in Kanan Yindua Minkaran, Oko Mariman Satala say La Nukia Bondi, Ila Kolia Kwasa Bondi, Koku Mute Man Mumu, Koku Bete Kaman Toro Tidong, Mariman Satala Be Uchikala, Nen Yindua Karan, Yakal Sandi Alay. You name Tibine Kipku Am Nahar, Am Tease, Am Stress, Am Dilameti, Am Chono Adina, Am Jaffe Jaffe Adina, Am Utken Kukamuna Fai, the Doctor Runit. Mune nyan bi bo ko saho. Te yalla tahna, te musella, yalla dina gene na harbi isilla kontante agyama. What is the prayer? O oh Allah, I am your servant, son of your servant, son of your maid servant. My forelock is in your hand. Your command over me is forever executed. And your decree over me is just. I ask you by every name belonging to you, which you name yourself with or revealed in your book, or taught to any of your creation, or you have preserved in the knowledge of the unseen with you, that you make the Quran the life of my heart, and the light of my chest, and a departure for my sorrow, and a release from my anxiety. O oh Allah, teach me from it that which I am ignorant of, and remind me, with it that which I was unable to forget, or that, that I was made to forget. I ask you by your mercy, for you are the most merciful, to grant me its recitation during the hours of the night and day in, in the form which pleases you. The prophet said, whoever makes this dua, he said, whatever problem you have and worry, Allah Azza wa Jalla will remove everything and it will be replaced with happiness. The people now ask, Ya Rasulallah, O Prophet of Allah, should we learn, should we memorize this dua? Then the Prophet Sallallahu said, yes, everyone who hears this should memorize them. <laughs> everyone should hear, should memorize this dua. Allahumma, Inni abduk, wabni abdik, wabni amatik, nasiyati biyadik, madin fiya hukmuk, adlun fiya qadauk, as'aluka bi kulli smin huwa laka sammayta bihi nafsik, aw anzaltahu fi kitabik, aw allamtahu ahadan min khalqik, aw istaatharta bihi fi ilmi al-ghaybi indak, an taj'alil Qur'an al-adhima rabi'a qalbi, wa nura sadri, wa dhahaba hammi, and it goes on and on and on. This should be memorized and be recited on a regular basis to get, get rid of worry and everything that is in our way that can harm in this life and of course in the life hereafter. In Surah Baqarah, verse 155 to 57, Allah Azza wa Jalla said, Be sure we shall test you with something of fear and hunger. وَلَدَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِشَيْءٍ مِنَ الْخَوْفِ وَالْجُوْءِ وَنَقْسِبْ مِنَ الْأَنْوَالِ وَالْأَنْفُسِ وَالثَّمَرَاتِ وَبَصِّرِ الصَّابِرِينَ You will be tested. Knowing that Allah said we will be tested, if any of these tests comes, we should conclude that this is a test from Allah. نَكَمَ دَنَّ تَمْبُوكِ نَكَمَ بِسَامْ Allah كُمْ بَالْ جَرَبِلَ يَالَ نَدِنَا لَنْ تَسْ كُنْ بُتَسْ نُوَ among which is fear, wal well, hunger, wanaksim minalangwal, 
reduction in wealth. Well, I'm fussy and life. I love my parents. They've been taken away. I love my husband. He's been taken away. I love my wife. He's been taken away. I love my loved ones. They've been taken away. I lo my loved ones have been taken away by death. Allah said that is a test. I've not taken them to punish them unless they are deserving. But then I've taken them to test you. He's gone, but you are being tested. But if at all you un at contain, if you stomach and contain this, this test, Allah said, Wa basiri sabirin. Give glad tidings to those who were tested and they exercise patience. Give glad tidings to those who have patience. Aladina idha jaathum musiba when musiba comes knocks at their door they said inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun we are from Allah and to Allah is our return Allah said momo sabarta give him the glad tidings inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun whoever resorts to this would enjoy forgiveness from Allah and they are the rightly guided ones as well. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل دم فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم. أما بعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. From these verses we are in Allah said ولا نبلو أنكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات إلى آخر آية. From these verses we can see that in a Muslim's life Hardship and suffering should never come as a complete surprise. We should always expect it any time. It's a test from Allah. It is a test of our iman, our faith in Allah. And we should not despair. لا تقنتوا من رحمة الله إن الله يغفر الذنوب جميعا Because there are lessons to be learned from every situation, especially from misfortune. A true believer should, should know that during his lifetime, he must expect to be he must expect to be visited by success and failure as long as i am alive i might be visited by success and failure i might be visited by pleasure and pain but i might be visited by loss and gain this is inseparable as far as life is concerned so long as we are alive this might come but the way we handle them is what makes the difference A typical example from the Quran, which is a lesson for every Muslim, Allah Azza wa Jalla tested his friend, who was actually a prophet, Nabi Ayyub. Prophet Ayyub was tested by Allah. And what did Allah say about him? And remember Ayyub when he cried to his Lord. Ayyub actually cried. Cried means he prayed to his Lord. Rabbi inni masaniya durru wa anta arhamur rahimin. Rabbi inni masaniya durru wa anta arhamur rahimin. He said, my Lord, truly distress has seized me, but you are the most merciful of those that have mercy. Or you are the most merciful of those that are merciful. Wa anta arhamur rahimin. Allah said, so we listened to him. We responded and accepted his prayer. We removed the distress that was on him and we restored his people to him and doubled their number as a grace from ourselves and a thing for, memor for commemoration for all who serve us. That's a reminder for all of us. Now what's the story about him? In Yusuf Ali's translation, his commentary, he told us a bit about the story of Ayub. That Ayub was a prosperous man. Banalem nun. And Nabi Molem Bari Banalem, Yalla Dafkome Adina Glitchibiram Chi Alan, with faith in Allah, and he suffered many hardships. His cattle were destroyed, his servants killed by the sword, and his family were crushed under his roof. 
but he held fast to his iman in Allah. As a further calamity, he was covered with ugly sores from head to foot. And his friends abandoned him. But throughout this ordeal, Throughout his ordeal, his faith, his iman remain rock solid. The iman remain rock solid, unswavering, undiminished. His iman in Allah was at the same level. Because of this, Allah Azza wa Jalla was pleased with him. So he was restored his full strength. He was ill. To the extent that people were avoiding him, Allah Azza wa Jalla restored his strength. Not only that, his prosperity redoubled. If he was worth 50 million, he became worth more than 50, in other words, 100 million dollars. And Allah Azza wa Jalla gave him seven sons and three daughters after the entire family were crushed. He lived to a good old age. And so four generations of his descendants before he died. This is what Ayyub was blessed with Allah. After he was tested with every hardship. Inna ma'al usri yusra. After every hardship comes ease. This inspiring story of Prophet Ayyub is a wonderful example to all of us. When we encounter sudden hardship, we should not feel sorry for ourselves. Because self-pity leads to nowhere. More so in the social media right now. Many a times people will go on social media complaining about their own problems, which are personal. Someone would even be visited by flu, and he would go and say, please help me, I have flu. Who would help? If you want sincere prayer from your friend, or from a loved one, or from someone, call him and say, ya, ya, ya akhi, pray for me. Inna mala amalu bin niyat. If at all it is sincerely, you want, if you want prayer sincerely, Allah, people might pray for you. But if at all you are seeking attention, self-pity would not take you anywhere. Allah wants us to exercise patience. That's why keeping, um, by exercising patience means you don't go complaining to everyone. It's just like the one who fasted and when um, and goes around everywhere saying, yeah, be well, I'm so I mean, what you're trying to do is just show people that you're fasting. What's the point? You're doing it for Allah. You know it's hard. Allah knows it's hard. You're being tested by Allah. Allah said, Wabasiri Sabirin. Give those who have patience, give them the glad tidings of what goodness from Allah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was backbeaten, was attacked, was humiliated by the non-believers. But that did not affect him at all. Allah assured him. In Surah Duha, Allah assured him. Let's take that assurance. Anytime you read Surah Duha, consider yourself being addressed if at all you are stressed. Because this is what Allah azza wa jalla said. By the glorious morning light and by the night when it is still, your Lord has not forsaken you. Consider your, your, yourself being addressed, not Prophet Muhammad. If you are stressed, read what Duha and ponder over the translation. Allah is saying, by your Lord, by your Lord, your Lord has not, your Lord has not forsaken you. Nor is he displeased with you. The hereafter will be much better for you than the present life. Have we not found you an orphan? That was Prophet Muhammad. But then consider yourself, has Allah not found you at a stage worse than where you are right now and gave you shelter and care? Have we not found you wandering and gave you guidance? Therefore treat not the orphan with harshness, nor turn away from the petitioner unheard. But the blessing of your Lord rehearse and proclaim. Anytime you are visited with calamity, stress, read Surah Al-Duha, and ponder over it. Wadduha wallayli idha saja ma wadda'aka rabbuka wa ma qala wala al-akhiratu khairun laka minal ula. However hard it is, consider the fact that the life hereafter is better than this one. It will definitely come to an end. I said, dimin nyawa nyarandi ninsa saya na rabe kuntula. I said, dia nyawa nyarandi ninsa saya na rabe kuntula. Num neh neh budeh nyoye rek dinajek. Wai num nahari nahari, num meti meti budeh nyoye dinajek. 
اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما اعطيت وقنا واشرف عنا شر ما قديت فانك تقدي ولا يقضى عليك انه لا يذل من واليت ولا يعز من اديت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت نستغفرك من كل ذنب ونتوب اليك ونؤمن بك ونتوكل عليك ونثني عليك الخير كله يا من يجير ولا يجار عليه اجرنا من النار ومن خزي النار ومن كل عمل يقربنا الى النار ودخلنا الجنه مع الابرار يا عزيز يا جبار إن الله يعمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون فذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون وأقيموا الصلاة